Well, hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video in our channel, Learn English with KC. As you know, this is a free online class, okay? We are broadcasting from Madrid, Spain, the capital of the country. Um, this is lesson number 58, level B1, intermediate, okay? So, yes, today we're going to talk about the difference between means and lose among all things okay so welcome to our channel if you're here for the first time it's a pleasure for us to have you here and if you are a recurrent um, student welcome back as well okay so once again a free online class lesson number 58 level b1 intermediate okay the main topic for today is miss versus lose okay let me make sure we have a good connection here uh, i think we should <laughs> And yes, we do indeed. Okay, very good. So let's get started. Let's get started. Okay, first of all, as I always say, welcome to Learn English with JC. Okay, remember, welcome only has one L, not a double S, as most people make the mistake of writing it with a double S. All right, this is the academy that sponsors our channel, Montero Espinosa. Okay, and let's begin with the date, as we usually do, to leave the proof there that we are broadcasting live okay the day yes today the britain uh, the american version is today is tuesday july 14th 2020 whereas the british is today is tuesday the 14th of july 2020 hello pame pame is back again with her cat thank you for joining us again pame it's always a pleasure to have you with us all right thank you very much okay let's talk about the weather like in the previous uh two levels uh, Today the sunrise in Madrid was at 6.57, the sunrise and the sunset was, or will be, at 9.44, yes, okay. In terms, hello Mike, welcome back. In terms of the temperature, hello Eliana, welcome back. In terms of the highest temperature in Madrid today will be 34 degrees Celsius, which is not too bad compared to other days. And that is equivalent to 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, and the lowest will be 18 degrees Celsius which is pretty good for the summer and uh, Fahrenheit 64.4 hello Gustavo how are you welcome back so we have Pame, Mike, Liana and Gustavo welcome back guys uh, I don't know why but uh, lately more people are connected to the higher levels uh, to levels B2 uh, B1 and B2 I don't know why in the past it was the other way around most people connected to uh, A1 and A2 but now I don't know why more people are connecting to uh, levels B1 and B2. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. I really don't know why. Uh, it's the same teacher. <laughs> All right. So we're going to learn a few ways to say, a few new ways to say hello. All right. There are a lot. So let's read them. <clears throat> Long time no talk. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Gustavo. All right. So uh, different ways to say hello. Let's read them starting with the first column. How are things? Hey, Gustavo, how are things? Welcome back. Hmm. Okay, the highest temperature for today in Texas is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. My God. All right, that's uh, a little hot. <laughs> a little hot, yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry, Eliana. <laughs> so, how are things? Yes. What have you been up to? Hmm, another one that I like a lot. Okay. Look what the cat dragged in. That is a very idiomatic expression. Okay. How are you feeling today? Very common. How have you been? Mm. What's up? Okay, greetings. Stay safe. Welcome. Hi, good evening, good morning, or hello. Good. Hey, or hey there. Okay, so there are a lot, a lot of expressions or sentences. How are you? How are you? It's very, very colloquial. A long time no see. Eh? Okay, a long time no talk, long time no see. What are you been up to? What have you been up to? Nice to see you again. Mm, look who it is. Oh, good morning, sir. How are you? That is very formal. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Another one for me. <laughs> okay, good day. Great to see you. Watch out. It's nice to meet you. What's going on? And good afternoon. So again, there are a lot. There are a lot. Um, the one that I like, you haven't, you have, if I haven't seen a person for a long time, you say, hey, what's up? Um, a long time no see. Where have you been doing? What, what have you been doing? Where have you been? So yeah, a lot of uh, expressions related to hello. Okay. All right, question number one for JC. You need to complete this sentence. And the sentence goes like, have you ever? Hmm. So ask me a sentence with, or a question with, have you ever? Have you ever? Hmm. Let's see, have you ever? So go ahead, Gustavo, Sharma, Eliana, eh, Pam, no, Pame. 
Okay, Mike, ask me a question. Have you ever? Have you ever? Okay, I will. I remember. I reserve the right to answer. Okay. <laughs> so, have you ever? Have you ever? Okay. Have you ever? So, go ahead. I'll be willing to read your sentences and try to answer them as honestly as possible. I promise you. I will try to answer them as honestly <coughs> as I possibly can. Okay. Have you ever? Have you ever? Okay, remember this is a, a present perfect question, so the verb has to be in past participle. Okay, okay Mike says, uh, have you ever seen Northern Lights? Uh, no, I don't think I have. I don't think I have. No, I haven't seen them. Yeah. Uh, Mike, have you ever been to Asia? Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Good, good sentence, Mike. No, I haven't. No, I would love to go, but uh, no, I have. I've never been there. Uh, Bobby. Have you ever have you ever done? You don't need a has. Have you ever done something embarrassing? Yes, I have. Uh, quite a few times, probably. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what, but, <laughs> but yes. So, probably remember. Have you ever done? Remove has. Have you ever done something embarrassing? All right. Step. Have you ever been to China? Oh no, ni hao. Oza, us ni hao. No, I haven't. Esther, no, I have never been to China. So the sentence: Have you ever been to China? Esther, uh, you say to China and the question mark. Okay. So, have you ever been to China? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Uh, Gustavo, have you ever come to Colombia? Not yet. Not yet. I want to go. No, not yet. Um, not yet, Gustavo. I want to go, but uh, I haven't had the chance. I haven't. Had, I need a, tour, a good tour guide. Um, so, um, if you if you act as one, I'll, I'll be more than happy to go. <laughs> yeah, I have many friends from Colombia, and I would love to go. I would love to visit Colombia. Yeah. So I would love to go. So. Um, Sharma, have you ever talked with ED? Have you ever talked to your parents? Yes, millions of times. Yes, I have talked to my parents a million. <laughs> I talk to them every day. I talk to them every day. Yes, I'd love to go to Colombia. Where are you from in Colombia, Gustavo? Where, what city? Where are you from in Colombia? I'd love to go. Uh, I've seen so many movies and I have so many. I've had a lot of students from Colombia in my classes and I love to go. Yeah, Colombian people are very nice. Yeah, you guys are nice and friendly. Yeah, so. Okay, yes, I love, I'm sure I loved it. All right, very good. So, anybody else? Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever? Oh, Bogota. Okay, all right, yeah. No, I've never, my father has, my father has. Yeah, uh, working for Iberia, my father has, but I, I've never been there, so. Hmm. Anyway, so anybody else? Uh, have you ever, have you ever? Anybody else? Okay. All right, let me move on, let me move on to the next screen. Okay, vocabulary directions. You can say directions or directions. Uh, uh, that's my. I prefer directions, but if you want to say directions, it's okay too. Okay, so remember we've been uh, taking a look at the directions for a few uh, classes already. So turn left, go straight on, or turn right. Mm -hmm. Go through, go across, go past. Okay, all right. Go towards. Okay, turn left at turn right at okay turn around go up and go down all right these are very very easy okay let me repeat them again turn left go straight on turn right go through go across go past go towards turn left at or turn right at turn around go up or go down all right, but it doesn't end there because I have a few examples. Don't worry. For example, asking for directions or directions. You could use these sentence. For instance, you could say, excuse me, how do I get to the, for example, how do I get to the airport? How do I get to the port? How do I get to the train station? Whatever. So, excuse me, how do I get to the or the, okay? Or, excuse me, where is the... Or the where is the bank where is the supermarket where is the whatever okay another one excuse me is there a gas station near here is there a bank is there a supermarket is there a hospital near here all right so and the last one is excuse me can you tell me the way to the can you tell me the way to the to the beach can you tell me the way to the airport can you tell me the way to the whatever all right so once again asking for directions you can use these sentences excuse me how do i get to the or the excuse me where is the or the excuse me is there a 
near here and excuse me can you tell me the way to the whatever all right and then in terms of giving directions you could use these sentences go straight ahead go along the street turn left or turn right take the first or the second turning on the right or on the left go uh, across or cross the street okay go past go through the park go across the bridge and go as far as the roundabout okay so there are several expressions here that you can use once again giving directions go straight ahead go along the street turn left or right take the first or the second turn on the right or on the left cross the street go past whatever go through the park go across the bridge and finally go as far as the roundabout okay so these are a few examples in terms of asking for directions and giving directions okay all right so let's concentrate now on the difference between me's versus loose well, many people make mistakes uh, because in Spanish it is the same translation uh, with both of them but they are slightly different okay so let's concentrate first on me's okay M I S S this is a regular verb, okay? The conjugation is missed, missed, with ed, missed, with ed, okay? Okay, number one, you use it with transportation, with flights, with trains, with buses, okay? For example, I missed a seven o'clock train. And, but you don't say I lost seven o'clock train because the train is still there. <laughs> so you missed it means you arrived late, okay? So I missed seven o'clock uh, train, so I went to work late. Well get up earlier my friend get up earlier all right or I got delayed and missed my flight oh I got delayed maybe you were in a meeting and you missed the flight so you got there late so when you miss a train or a, a plane is because you got there late because maybe you were busy or you got up late okay so that is in terms of transportation remember miss is a regular verb miss missed missed with ed in the past and ed in the past participle lose is irregular but we will take a look at that in a minute okay you can also use the verb miss m-i-s-s or double s with events and opportunities events and opportunities for example oh man you missed a great movie last night they was they were showing a very good movie on tv and you missed it what were you doing oh yeah i went out i didn't have time or i was studying english with jc okay that is a good uh, a good excuse <laughs> So yeah, you missed a great movie last night. Okay, what were you doing? Or you missed a great English class today. If you're not watching me today, you missed a great class. However, as you know, all the videos are recorded and you can watch them anytime you want. Okay, so no problem. Did you miss today's class? Like Lisa, she's not here. Besides, besides, I always put the videos in the different uh, WhatsApp uh, channels or WhatsApp groups. On, uh, the following day so if you cannot be here today don't worry you can watch it tomorrow all right so uh, and finally last but not least you can use the verb miss to talk about feelings sad when we don't see someone okay for example I miss Lisa oh yes yeah, she's not here today I miss Lisa where is she I miss Lisa. she's probably working I miss Umberto our president yeah he hasn't been with us for a long time he told me he's coming back at the end of the month so that's what he said. He's coming back at the end of the month. Okay, so for, for instance, I miss my girlfriend. She's on holiday with her family. I'm here all alone with my dog. I miss my girlfriend or my wife or, or my lover. Yes. Okay, or my brother moved to Paris last year. I really miss him. Okay, so when you miss somebody. So once again, uh, oh, Eliana misses Lisa too. Yes, I know, I know. Eliana has a broken heart. <laughs> oh boy, well, at least we have you, Eliana. Thank God we have you at least. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about your network, uh, Sharma. Yeah, sometimes things don't work as expected. Okay, Pamela misses Lisa. I'll tell her. I'm gonna tell her. All right. See, uh, from time to time, she's, she's very busy right now, but she sends me uh, audio messages. And uh, yeah, she keeps me up to date. So yes, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. About her, she's fine. So again, you will use miss with transportation, events, and opportunities, and to talk about somebody that we haven't seen. <laughs> we miss Lisa. Lisa, come back, come back. Anyway, all right. So now, in terms of lose, lose is an irregular verb. Okay, the conjugation is lose, lost, lost. Okay, so it is irregular. 
L O S E is the present, L O S T is the past as well as the past participle. Lose, lost, lost. Okay, so that is uh, the verb lose. Okay, and we use it with objects. For example, something you have lost something or somebody. Well, what is this? Uh, I don't know what it is. For example, here the example says, uh, I lost my dog. Well, I will never lose my dog. But anyway, I lost my dog. Please um, help me to find him. <laughs> take more, take more care of your dog, my friend. <laughs> Oh no, I've lost my keys. Well, that is easier to lose. Uh, keys are easier to lose to lose than a dog. <laughs> okay, so we use it with objects. So although considering the dog an object. Well. Okay, so number two. Sports games. Yes, my favorite soccer team lost three to nil or three to zero in the semi-final. Yes, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. My team sometimes uh, lose. And uh, so, yeah, you know that. <laughs> I've experienced that quite a few times in my life. And the last one is somebody who is gone from your life. Okay, that one. We lost uh, Susan because she passed away and she's no longer with us, for instance. Okay, everybody misses Lisa. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's take a look at the examples with somebody who is gone from your life. She lost her husband during the war. Well, that is sad. That is very, very sad. Or... Uh, I've lost my girlfriend. Uh, we had um, a messy breakup, and I don't think I'll ever see her again. Yes, well, you should have treated her better. Yeah, that's the price you pay when you don't treat your girlfriend nice. So, yes. Uh, no, you can't, Mike. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. The answer to Mike's question is no. From my point of view, no, you can't. You cannot learn a language without grammar. No. Um, you will speak it maybe, but you will make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. I remember about uh, two summers ago I was in Mallorca, in the, on the island of Mallorca with my parents, and we were having a drink, and suddenly this uh, couple came and they sat next to us with their two daughters, all right? They were from a, from a European country, I don't remember the country, well they were not from Spain. And uh, so the girl, one of the girls asked me a question, I could tell she was not from Spain, but her grammar was excellent because she was studying here in Spain. And so I answered the question. And then we started talking and then her father started talking, I don't know about what. And he made so, so, so many errors, I could hardly understand what he was saying. Why? Because nobody taught him the grammar. Nobody taught him how to say, well, the first is the noun or the, or the adjective or the verb, how to conjugate the verb. He didn't know how to speak. I mean, he was able more or less to communicate and he had been living in Spain for over five years, over five years, and I couldn't understand a word he said. I couldn't understand a word he said. So no, you cannot. Uh, you're gonna speak. You cannot learn language without the grammar. People will not understand you. So uh, that is my opinion. Okay. So yes, uh, lose with objects, sport, games, someone who's gone from your life, and miss with transportation, events, and opportunities, and to talk about feeling sad when we don't see somebody. Like everybody misses Lisa, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell her guys later on. Okay, today's question number two to JC. A complete question. Here's a question. Do you think you will ever do you think you will ever? Do you think you will ever you will ever and then I will say yes I think so or no I don't think so. Okay, depending on your question. <laughs> so do you think you'll ever Ladies and gentlemen, ask me whatever you want, and I'll try to answer it as honestly as possible, I promise. <laughs> I'm an honest guy, okay? I'm an honest guy. I uh, don't like to take advantage of people. Never, never. I'm going to try to be fair as much as possible. Always be fair with people. Okay, so, do you think you'll ever... Okay. Do you think... The problem also, Mike, is that, um, going back to your question, to learn another language, it is is almost impossible if you don't know your own language properly. Let me explain. If you don't know what a verb is, if you don't know what an adverb is, if you don't know what a infinitive preposition or gerund is, it's impossible to learn another language. So. Uh, I had a student and I told him, hey, don't forget that after a preposition, you have the gerund in English. He had an exam and he missed it. Hello? Anyway, so Pami, do you think you'll ever, uh, do you think you'll ever, you'll ever in the magic, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, Pami, do you think you'll ever, 
No, uh, you you removed it. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't understand it. Bam, write it again, please. Write it again. Uh, so anyway, do you think you'll ever? Do you think you'll ever get married? Uh, do you think you'll ever have children? Do you think you'll ever visit uh, China? Oh no. Do you think you'll ever? Uh, you'll ever have another dog? Do you think you'll ever? Oh, there are many questions. <laughs> Okay, I'll be honest in the answer, I promise. Do you think you'll ever? Do you think you'll ever? Okay, so, ask your questions, please. Let me see what's in your mind. Okay, Gustavo. Do you think you'll ever achieve teaching us to speak fluently? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. All right. The answer does not depend only on me. Okay. So the answer depends also on you. <laughs> it depends on how much you study and how much you practice. Um, we've been on the on, on air on the air for about about three four months only. So uh, <laughs> to be able to, sp I remember I had a student. I remember I had a student many many years ago, and the first thing he said, the first day of class, he said, "I want to be able to understand the CNN a hundred percent." He was never able to understand the CNN a hundred percent. Number one, because he never studied. He only practiced when I went to his house. Two days a week, one hour per day. So one hour per day is like lifting weights one hour uh, a week. Your muscle will not grow. In English, the same thing happens. So again, it takes time. It takes time. Learning a language takes time. It takes time, effort, and money. Sorry, but that's the way it is. It takes time. Uh, some people will learn it faster than others, but it takes time, effort, and money. So... Anyway, uh, Eliana, do you think you'll ever swim with sharks? Never, ever. <laughs> no way, no way, Eliana. Never, ever, or never, ever. No, I'm afraid of sharks. As a matter of fact, I remember I went to see the movie uh, Jaws in 1975. I was very, very young, and uh, it uh, it marked my life to the point to the point that I cannot. I repeat, I cannot be on a big swimming pool by myself. I repeat, I cannot be. By myself on a big, big or small, on a big swimming pool, uh, and I know how to swim, no problem. But when I go to the Mediterranean Sea or when I go, when I'm in the ocean or the sea, I don't go far from the beach. No, no far from the shore. No, 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 no far. Uh, so uh, I don't like to, uh, to swim in the ocean or in the sea. And uh, no, I'm. Uh, so the answer is no, never, ever, Eliana, never. All right. So, um, Steph. Do you think you'll ever adopt another pet? Probably. Uh, I didn't adopt this one. I bought this one. Okay, I paid 400 euros for this one. Uh, so it's a real one. Uh, so adopt. I I think it's a good cause. Adopting a pet is great. I agree. It's, it's great. Uh, however, the options that you have, uh, if you want a specific dog, it's very difficult to find it in, in an adoption uh, shelter. I think it's a great thing once again, but uh, no, I don't think I will adopt a pet. Uh, I would probably buy one, the one that I like. I like so I'm sorry if, I, if you don't like my answers there but uh, it's a good thing but I don't adopt pets I, I just get the pet that I really want okay so do you think you'll ever dance in public no way <laughs> no way Pamela. no way people will laugh at me immediately no way I'm not a good dancer I'm not a dancer period so no 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 no, no, no. I will never dance in public <laughs> it's a good question very funny question so, all right. Any more questions with do you think you'll ever? Your questions are very good. I like them. They're very, very good. Okay. Oh, my. Do you think you'll ever swim? Uh, swim where and how? Mike, uh, you need to tell me more. You need to ask me a little bit more. Like, Ileana asked me to swim with sharks. Uh, Ileana, by the way, have you ever swam with sharks? Uh, have you ever done it? Um, I know in Mexico there are places where you can do it. Uh, but I've, I've never done it. So, have you ever done it, you and Juan? Uh, let me know, please. Let me know. Let me know uh, with uh, with white sharks. I, I've seen it in movies and in uh, documentaries, but uh, <laughs> no way, <laughs> no way. I know you're inside the cage and everything, and you're very well protected, but <laughs> no way. Suppose something happens, and uh, no way, no way, no way. Accidents happen. So, Eliana, let me know. Have you ever done it? Uh, have you ever done it? I wouldn't be able to swim with dolphins. Imagine with sharks. So, pff, dolphins are, uh, you know, they're docile uh, animals, but a shark, forget it. So, um, let me go on to the uh, today's wise advice. Uh, here it goes. Uh, Mike, please rephrase the sentence because I'm not sure I understand it. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm very afraid to do that kind of thing. We have, 
Never done that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's very, very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very dangerous. Yeah, but I thought that maybe you being from Mexico, you have done it already. I don't know. Do you know anybody, Liane, who has done it in Mexico? So, yeah, has anybody has uh, has ever swam among uh, um, white sharks? Because I know it can be done. It can be done, but it's dangerous. And probably expensive too. So anyway, uh, what is spelling? Read this one because this one is good. This one is very good. What is spelling mistake can destroy your life. A husband sent this to his wife. I'm having a wonderful time. Wish you were her. Instead of here, <laughs> he made a mistake. He said, wish you were her. In other words, he's telling his wife that he's with another woman because of an E at the end of the word H-E-R. So that makes a huge difference. So again, one spelling mistake can destroy your life. A husband sent this to his wife. I'm having a wonderful time. Wish you were her. <laughs> so that was really bad. <laughs> Imagine his wife receiving this. Whoa. Uh, only for a typo. A spelling mistake. Wow. Of course, if his wife knows him, she will know that he made a mistake. Or not. If his wife is probably a jealous type, he has a problem. So, the, did you get the... Uh, it's kind of a joke. It's kind of a joke. But uh, did you get it? Do you understand it? wish you were here instead of wish you were her so anyway today's joke before i go a teacher asks what's the difference between a problem and a challenge okay i repeat oh, this one is good what's the difference between a problem and a challenge a student respond uh, well uh, three boys plus one girl it's a problem and one boy plus three girls is a challenge so, so once again a teacher asks what's the difference between a problem and a challenge a student responds well three boys plus a girl is a problem and uh, one boy plus three girls is a challenge okay <laughs> anyway so I hope you like the joke uh, it's, I think it's pretty good and the wise advice yeah the wise advice is even better than the joke <laughs> So, yeah, anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is all for today. It's been a pleasure once again. Thank you so much for your attention. Have a wonderful day. Uh, Pami, you like the joke, huh? <laughs> uh, that man is dead already. <laughs> and he doesn't know it, right? <laughs> yeah, he's probably dead. <laughs> Hopefully, Juan will not make such a mistake, Ileana. Please, hopefully not. <laughs> all right. So, uh, anyway. Uh, so this is all for today folks. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you on the next level uh, level B2 in a few minutes in just a minute. Okay. Thank you. Have a